by show of hands, how many of you within the last three years have gone online to book some sort of travel arrangement, either an airplane flight, hotel, rental car? Almost, almost all of you. Same question here, a little bit different twist. By show of hands, how many of you in the last three years have used some sort of online banking, whether it's an app, okay, most everybody here. What studies show now that three-fourths, 75% of Americans are now their own travel agent. Instead of calling an agent or calling the airlines or calling the hotel directly to book travel, now they take that uh, important aspect into their own hands and do that booking themselves. Likewise, online banking, 61% of Americans, that's a large number when you think about it, 61% are using some sort of online banking whenever utilizing banking service. They don't go to the bank anymore to deposit checks. It's all done online. Well, there's a consumer revolution that has taken place in the last five years, and lots of it has come about through technological advancements. And what has happened is that the consumer has now taken authority and empowered themselves to control the two aspects that they consider most valuable to them, and that's their time and their money. In addition to time and money, what they're doing is they're basing their decision a lot also in, in part on customer service and how we are dealt with from a personal perspective. Dr. Richard Friedenberg, who is with the University of California Medical Center, talks about, from a healthcare perspective, the service, and he uses an analogy of that of an airline. And what he says here, I found, found very interesting, is that most people, when booking an airline, they don't really consider how they're going to get from point A to point B. They think that there's competent people, technologies available, that we're going to get from point A to point B. So what they do is they base their decision on those things that they know and can identify with, those things that they value. And that's that, you know, is it a long wait time? Is it friendly service? Is it courteous people that I'm dealing with? It's that customer experience that is so important with, with uh, who, who people are choosing whenever dealing with customers. Likewise, people cannot identify with the knowledge and skill of a doctor. So on a medical standpoint, they're basing their decision with a medical provider of the same, same criteria. Who is it that I can go see that gets me in and out? Who is it that provides that human interaction, that great service, and I'm, I want to come back and experience that service again? And what he calls that is what's called a moment of truth. A moment of truth is when you receive great customer service. Now we're all in some sort of business where we either interact with a customer on an external basis or customers internal. And by that I mean people that you work with. And it's important that we understand those moments of truth and providing those great experiences on a consistent basis. So if we look at what really is a, a moment of truth, we break that down into a couple of different factors. One is human interaction. Now let me ask you another question. How many of you have had this same hairdresser for over five years? Okay. And if I asked you why you had that, you would have a consistent theme there. There would be trust that you have with that person, not only with your hair, but you trust them with your information, with your life. You go and see this person, once every six to eight weeks, possibly. You see them for 45 minutes an hour, but they know everything there is about your family. They know about your kids, the ones that just got out of jail for smoking weed, the ones they know about your marriage problems. They know everything about that. Well, why is that? It's that human interaction. Studies also show that when touch is provided to someone, barriers are let down. So if we can provide that, that human interaction, and again, that's through great communication, either through verbal skills or even through body movement. And by doing that, then we provide that trust factor that is so important. So why is trust so important to us? Well, regardless of what business we're in, once you have that trust, 
and you build that, what that does is give consumer retention. And consumer retention, again, whether from an external basis uh, or whether you have a business that is, that is uh, uh, predicated on revenue or whether you work internally and work for a company, that consumer retention means to you personally job security. Because without that, we are not able to keep our job. And without job security, we don't have direct deposit. Very important to us, regardless of whether we have direct interaction with the customer or not. So I suggest to you, whenever looking or whenever dealing with people, again, either it could be the person sitting next to you in the cubicle, could be some other department, a person that you're uh, interacting with, could be a customer you're working with directly. Understand those moments of truth. And Bob gave a great example just a moment ago of a moment of truth. He stopped on the side of the road and gave service to somebody, and guess what? It returned to him immediately. That doesn't always happen, but it does return to you. And Bob, I thank you for sharing that with us. So remember, look at those moments of truth. Are you communicating effectively? Do you have great human interaction whenever dealing with people. Are you developing trust with people, again, whether externally or internally? And if not, identify those areas where you can improve, where you can improve your communication and develop that retention either, through, either based on friendship, based on business, personal, professional, but understand that those moments of truth are what separates those that are successful and those that have struggles. Madam Toastmaster.